All right, what's up, everybody? This is Rob Barrington again, and I have a cool hand to show you from, I believe it was last week, one of the common game hands of the afternoon. I don't remember which day it was, but uh, it's a cool hand nonetheless, and it actually is a really nice preview for the seminar I'm going to be giving at Honors Bridge Center on November 10th. All right, that's uh, a week from this coming Sunday. November 10th, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. in Honors, we're going to be doing a Declare Play seminar. And my goal in this seminar is to try to get you guys from good rules followers, right? Knowing the rules, eight ever, nine never, high card short side, things like that, to good bridge thinkers, right? Where we're thinking more about the hands that are around the table, whether it's on defense and we're thinking about our partners or declares hand, or when we're declaring, which we will be here in a moment, what the opponents have based on what they've bid and what they play. So I sent out a quick email uh, earlier today and gave you a couple of questions about this particular hand. And the auction is in front of you here. We're sitting south. We saw that our partner opened a heart. Our right-hand opponent bid two clubs, and we made a negative double. And then it went two diamonds past three clubs, and we doubled again. And our partner bid three hearts, and we bid three no trumps. So this is kind of a weird auction and not the best auction. But the moral to this story is when you maybe think you had a bad auction and you're not in a good spot, don't give up any hope. Right? You still get to play the hand. You're still in the ball game. So buckle down and try to play as well as you can. Some people just kind of get derailed here when they're like, my goodness, how did I end up with three no on this hand? When, hey you might have stumbled into something playable and makeable. So let's see what happens in the first few tricks. And I gave these tricks to you, but what I want you to think about as I'm playing these cards is, first of all, what do we know right now? And essentially we know that East has clubs and West has diamonds and some number of points in each hand. As we see more cards get played, the picture will become more clear. And our job is to actually try to paint that picture as accurately as possible as to what the opponents are holding. So let's see the opening lead here. And the opening lead was the eight of diamonds. Now, I, I was actually sitting south at this table and my left-hand opponent was a, a seasoned player. She knows kind of what to lead here. And I took this as a fourth best lead. Right. She has already bid diamonds. Uh, this is not top of nothing. She has something reasonable in the diamond suit, especially considering what we're holding. And we'll see what happens next here. We played low from the dummy, and our opponent won the ace to our right, and we played low from our hand, and then our opponent switched to a low spade. Right. So at this moment, you should be thinking a couple of things. First of all, West did not lead clubs, the suit that East bid twice, essentially, on this hand. And East won the Ace of Diamonds and didn't return the suit that their partner bid. So at this moment, I would say that it's very likely that West has no clubs, because they never let a club originally. And that might not be true, but at most they have one. And East seems like they have no diamonds left, which means West started with six diamonds. So we knew they had clubs and diamonds, but now it looks like they each had six cards in their respective suits. Uh, the big tell here is the fact that they didn't return a diamond. Right? If partner... Even if partner did have a club and they chose to lead diamonds, there was a very good reason for it. And East was a very good player, a pro in fact. So he would know to return a diamond before leading a spade because the spade might be knocking out partner's entry. So if there's no future in clubs, they definitely would have returned a diamond, but they did not do that. So right now it looks like East started with exactly one diamond. And we're gonna play low from our hand. West is gonna win the king of spades. We play low from dummy, and then West just returns another spade, which is won by the East player's ace. And now East just exits a spade. All right, so East is actually playing this hand very well defensively. He's really not giving us much to do other than take tricks that he knows we're going to take. 
right? So he hasn't broken any of these suits for us. And it seems like he's really reticent to break clubs. And you can't blame him because of what he's looking at in the dummy and because of the fact that he's good enough to know that there was a good reason partner didn't leave clubs. And avoid is a very possible reason. But let's take our time here. Let's count the hand as we know it exists right now. We just saw all of our opponents follow suit to three rounds of spades. So now we know that East started with likely six clubs, one diamond, and three spades. Does that seem right to you guys? Now we can test this out in a second. Maybe East has two diamonds for some reason and just chose not to lead a diamond, but at the table you have to be thinking that's very unlikely, especially considering that this is a good player to your right. So you can add a little bit of weight to your assumptions based on the fact that they kind of know what would be right in this spot most of the time. So it sounds like we have a good count on their hand. So if we want to test this, first of all, we're just going to cash our spade. And notice I am not going to pitch a, a club from dummy. I'm actually going to pitch a heart because if East does have six clubs, I'm going to be able to get to a position where I can just play clubs perfectly knowing exactly what he has so i want to save a third club and dummy so i can do a lot in that suit and i'll show you what i mean in a second so i'm going to pitch a heart and here we see not surprisingly the opponent pitches a low club right a suit we know they have quite a few of and here it is actually safe to cash your king of diamonds right because if we cash the king of diamonds we know that our right hand opponent is not going to be able to lead a diamond here ever right because either they have exactly one left and for some reason they didn't return it originally or like we suspected and we see here they only had one diamond to begin with so we don't have to worry about west getting in because we have three top hearts and we know east has three of them and we're going to be able to play clubs pretty much with perfect information if everything goes well so at this moment what you should be thinking is, okay, I have three winners so far. Those are the three tricks I've taken. I'm going to be able to take three more hearts. That's six. I might be able to take that fourth heart. That would be seven. But if I can get three club tricks, I will just be able to make this hand. So knowing that East has at most three hearts left, we can safely cash our ace and king and queen of hearts. We don't want to take a heart finesse. Because if, for some reason, East has the Jack of Hearts, we now lose that trick and the Ace of Clubs. So here, we're trying to get to nine tricks, only losing one. And the solution here, if we counted this hand properly, is to cash our hearts and then play clubs. And we're going to play clubs knowing that East has Ace, Jack, and two low ones left. So we're going to have perfect information. But maybe we'll get a little bit of luck in this scenario. So we lead a low heart. We win the ace, and they both follow low, and then we cash the king of hearts, and they both once again follow low. I can pitch my diamonds. I do not need them. I know my left-hand opponent is not going to get the lead anymore unless something really weird happened here. And I'm going to play the queen of hearts, and oh, nice, an extra piece of information. Now notice we might be a little upset that we pitch one of our hearts because now they're going to run but that doesn't matter to us all we really wanted to do was get to nine tricks we know we're in a contract that's probably not the best so we're just trying to make it right so now we see our right hand opponent pitch one of their clubs and now we should know for a fact that each of us the dummy right hand opponent and our hand are down to exactly three clubs we play really any club we want from the dummy um knowing something for certain east has ace jack eight of clubs left so at this point we could play the five if they played the eight we would play the nine and then we would just knock out the ace of clubs and they have no choice but to lead another club to give us our ninth trick we could play the 10 in which case if they play low we just take a finesse and win with the 10 if they cover with the jack we'll play the queen and then we'll knock out the other honor with the nine of clubs and we'll have our king or vice versa so here it doesn't really matter as long as we know that we could pitch down to this position we can even just play the king of clubs from this hand 
Now if they play the ace, we get to play low from our hand, and they pitch, and now they have no choice but to lead a club. And of course we're just going to take a marked finesse here and claim nine tricks on this board. So this is a relatively simple version of just counting out a hand. Right? And it's using the information that is available to you. And remember, that information isn't always just the bids that they make. It's also the leads that they make and the plays that they make subsequent to those leads. So in this hand, as soon as East doesn't return a diamond, we can count their minor suit shape pretty likely, right? We know they only had one diamond. And the fact that their partner didn't lead clubs means they're unlikely to have any. And even if they have any, it's at most one. But the further we get through this hand, when we see the spades break 3-3, three, three, now we kind of know the exact shape of both of their hands. And that's very helpful for declaring a hand when you just need to take as many tricks as possible, right? You're trying to take your nine tricks and get out alive. And that's what we did on this board. So we turned what was kind of an ugly auction into a very good result because we didn't panic and we played counted the hand as we went and that's what we're going to be doing next sunday november 10th at honors uh, sign up right on my website learnbridge.nyc or you can just talk to any of the honors staff and they will get you into that class so sign up as early as you can and i hope to see some of you next sunday and stay tuned to this channel on youtube there's going to be a bunch of live lessons coming up and some new content i have coming out very shortly uh, thanks a lot folks and i will see you at the tables till next time Bye bye